So far, we've got to know history makers Chris Gunter and Jess Fishlock, as well as a man who plays regularly at the highest level possible in Ben Davis. So for this one, I decided to go down a different pathway and get to know a man who, up until recently, not many of us knew a whole lot about. But he's been in the headlines since, becoming the newest member of Wales' squad, as well as his outstanding work off the pitch. We've come to Rotherham to get to know Will Vokes. Jose! Will Will Vokes, eh? Right, How are you, mate? Long time no see. What's the crazy dog, Hello, mate. mate. Come on. Where are we going? Go on in there. In Come there. on. Hello. Mate, Hello. This is absolutely crazy. What's his name? Benji. Go on, Benji. Benji. He's off. It was like in Falkirk, mate. We used to run around the estate trying to chase him. And now you just have to act ultra calm. Come on, in. Hello, Benji, come on. <laughs> Carnage. Sit down. Sit down. Good boy. Here you go. Still a hip knock case here. Here you are, oh. on request. What have we got here? Now you can put your weight on now because you're not skinny. What about yourself? Are you, no, uh, uh, are you a cake minute, eater? No, I'll have an apple, I think. Yeah, yeah I might. Am I good to take this one? Yeah, it'll be self, mate. Do you want a plate? <laughs> you're pregnant nah, already. Let's mess about it, yeah. Tuck in, yeah. You can have that, you're retired now, mate. Oh dear, watch your fingers, mate. Mm. <laughs> Trump, yeah. You know, yeah, that's a bad coat, isn't it? That's terrible. <laughs> well, here we are in your lovely little home. Yeah. How's life, mate? Yeah, it's good. Uh, really enjoying it at the moment. Football's going well. Um, yeah, my own life is happy and healthy, so yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. Um, had a nice couple of coffees off you there. Beautiful, mate. Posh ones as well. Posh, just for you, mate. I knew you were coming tonight. No instant coffee here. <laughs> no, none of that. Espresso in this house, mate. Uh, for people who don't know, <coughs> we, we played played together for a short little period at Falkirk when you were just kicking things off in your in your career. And you were coming to the end. Listen, listen. <laughs> what I'm going to say is, without me stepping aside, maybe you wouldn't be here now. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. Playing at a good level, international football. It took for me to retire <laughs> for you to get that midfield slot because you were a centre half weren't you? Yeah I was yeah. yeah actually yeah the year you signed I was still playing centre half and then yeah when your knee eventually packed in um, I think yeah I came into midfield yeah you probably were injured actually really so yeah I hadn't have thought of that. You're welcome. Yeah thanks mate and then uh, yeah played in midfield one game came on I think and then that was it then the rest history midfield from then on really. And I think in that period with Falker, because anybody asked me questions about you, obviously that little connection that we that we had, short period together, um, and they ask, what do you like as a player? He's, he's getting called up into the international <laughs> setup, and I say, one thing he will do, and I said it throughout the commentary in the in the Trinidad and Tobago game, he'll have a shot. <laughs> this fella I had no will idea shoot. where you were going then, I was worried. This fella will have a shot. Mm, yeah, it's true, true, isn't it? Yeah, it's true, yeah. Something that I've always kind of done, and... Sometimes you've got to hold it back a bit. Um, but yeah, the Trinidad game especially, there was a few chances that opened up for me. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Tyler, I think, blocked one <laughs> blocked one that was going in, I think. Um, yeah, I definitely like a shot. You not so much. That's how you finished your knee, innit? Having a shot and shooting. <laughs> Remember that quite well. Um, yeah, I like to try and chip in as many goals as I can. I got a few more this year than kind of more like what I wanted. Um, yeah, a few long ranges. I'd like a few tappings. <laughs> So, mid-twenties now, Will, um, it's taken you sort of a different pathway to most to get to where you are in, in playing championship football, regular. Um, I'm guessing that upbringing has probably helped you in terms of your mindset moving forward as a footballer. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, yeah, like you say, I've had a, a different route to most. Um, it was all happy days for me until about 18, yeah, first year pro, kind of 18, 19. From then, you know, as a kid, it had all been flying easy. Um, and then massive kind of block in the road at 18, 19, got released from Tranmere um, and went searching for football really. I was playing part-time at the time at Workington in the Conference North, but I wanted to stay full-time. So I had about two months kind of overlap of playing part-time and then the Falkirk opportunity came up and um, yeah, that was something that I just wanted to be in full-time football and Stephen Presley was the manager at the time and I got like got on really well with him over the phone. He seemed like a good guy, which he is, and yeah, kind of packed my stuff, went up, and I didn't get paid for about six months. I just had a flat, and then managed to work my way in, and that was the year I think you came, mm. um, or maybe after. And once I started playing, then I managed to stay in the team, and then yeah, it just kind of accelerated from then gradually uphill, and 
yeah, probably at my peak now of what I've been at on my career. But yeah, it's been an interesting journey. But I wouldn't change it. Looking back now, I wouldn't change anything that's happened. I remember reading on a forum somewhere that the players were getting like three grand a week, four grand a week, and I was thinking, oh my God, it was so false. Yeah, it's so hard um, because you do go from being in this little bubble of thinking like you're doing well to in the real world of football where you're an 18-year-old, 19-year-old who's played no first-team football. You've played handful of, you know, you've played every youth team game, but not many people watch them. It's changed a bit now. Um, and yeah, I went up to Scotland and I thought I'd play as well. I thought, you know, I was kind of, not promised to play, but good chance of playing. I didn't play for about four months. And then I thought that was when it really kind of hit. I was in this little flat in Falkirk, and that's the lowest I've been in my career by a mile. I was in a low, low point there on my own. Um, but I just had to stick at it and eventually it came good. And yeah, I suppose like the rest is history really. Let's jump straight into the international fold, right? I'm sure you've told the story countless times, but Getting the call up, one, I'm guessing would have been a big surprise. Yeah. Even though I think Giggs had been watching in recent weeks. What was going through your, through your mind when you, when you did find out? Yeah, um, obviously I, I knew the manager had been watching because he's so high profile. You know, he stepped foot in Rotherham Stadium and people knew straight away. Um, one of the lads actually had a text to say, <laughs> of his missus saying, I've just spotted Ryan Giggs in the in the stadium and he went to me, who will they be watching? <laughs> and I was just stood there like, oh, I don't know mate, I don't know. So obviously I knew he was he was watching. Did you know beforehand? Um, I think yeah, they had checked my eligibility to play for Wales, because um, obviously it had been a long time since I'd been involved with Wales. So I had a feeling that he might be at a couple of games, but then obviously that cemented it. And then yeah, obviously played the game and that, and then two weeks later I got a missed call and a voicemail off the manager saying, you know, I hear Frank Giggs here, can you give me a call? And obviously that's uh, a nerve-wracking phone call to take, but exciting. Why are you blanking Giggs' calls? I know, yeah. <laughs> We're not allowed our phones in the in the training ground. So I uh, came so out to that, so I was like, well... Called him straight back? Yeah, give him a bit nod. <laughs> yeah, called him straight back. And um, he was brilliant on the phone. Yeah, it made me really feel at ease. And um, just let, let me know, listen, I'm announcing the squad tomorrow, you're going to be in it. Yeah. And I was... Um, yeah, blown away. Obviously, like I thought, I was done with Wales. Like, uh, I kind of thought, yeah, it's never going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, but for it to have happened, and yeah, it was it was crazy. It made my family so proud. Probably the proudest I reckon they've been. Really? Um, definitely my mum because she's obviously Welsh, and um, and then yeah, four days later or whatever, you're joining up with the squad. So it happened really quick. Was it like, you know, if you want to? If you want to date a girl or something, and you get the text through, and you're thinking, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call back too soon because I don't want to be desperate. <laughs> nah, I was just straight, straight in. Yeah. I'm off, I'm off out the training ground. That was crazy. Desperate yeah. will. Giggs, I Giggs would have been looking at his foot. Oh, he's keen. Yeah. Isn't he? Thirty seconds later, he's ringing me. No, yeah, obviously, um, that's a ringing when I got in my car from the training ground, and yeah, um, it was an interesting voicemail to listen to. Usually, I'm expecting it to be Sky wanting me to sign another contract or bloody. My Wi-Fi or something, but yeah, yeah to get that, um, it was special. One week, you, you know, you're just going about your business, playing club football. The next week, you're meeting up with the Welsh squad. What was that like? Because there's obviously some high-profile <laughs> names in that squad. Yeah. It's it's hard sometimes. You, you want to play it cool and act cool and act as if it's normal, but it's not, is it? No, it's not. It's hard because you you are like new kid, new kid at school as well because I was the only lad called up that was new. Um, and yeah, like I played against some of these players, but obviously, you know, a lot of them I haven't, and playing the Prem, and yeah, I, I kind of went in with a mindset of like, just enjoy it, and try and show people what I can do in the training and stuff, so the, I've said to people after, but the football's the most normal bit, like, the tr you know what it's like, but when you go over the pitch and you play, and it's, you're just playing with who's around you, and the training, it's more like the, the casual stuff before that, that's, that's harder, and obviously yeah. seeing the big names, it, it's not normal, like you say, to be sitting opposite from Gareth Bale, you know, and Ashley Williams and all these players who've had fantastic careers who I've only ever watched on telly, really, and know about. But they were all great and make you feel at home. And as I say, once the balls are out, it's pretty normal. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a, a different experience. It's like being a new kid on the block and new kid at school, really, is the best way to... Well, I suppose it's like someone joining a new job, isn't it, and you yeah. don't know anyone? Because I didn't know anyone either. Even though I played against the players, they probably hated me because I'm horrible on the pitch. <laughs> but I never, I didn't actually know anyone. Um, well, saying that actually, um, 
Danny Ward I knew from years and he, we had some good little throwbacks of okay. talking about him at Wrexham and me at Tranmere and we actually played in a game against Ben Davis, North East South Wales years ago and he had the team sheet on his phone somehow yeah. and it was interesting to look at um, how after you know, 10, 12 years we've ended up in the same squad. Isn't it funny you sometimes need that link? Yeah, just it that might link. be the smallest <laughs> yeah. of links but I was you need clinging someone, yeah, yeah. someone. Yeah. and he's probably thinking, oh my God, yeah. I've seen this guy for 10 years, yeah, why is he following yeah, me everywhere? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, <laughs> he's following me. No, yeah, um, he seemed to know loads, remember loads, Danny Ward, um, which was great because obviously it was something to talk about and um, yeah, he we played against each other, each other loads of times. I always remember him being a good goalie, and then he got his move to to Liverpool from Wrexham, and it was spoke about highly because obviously we were playing in the same development league or whatever at the time. And uh, yeah, that small link, as you say, those a good little uh, way in, I suppose. Now, whether it's international football, club <coughs> football, whatever level, it comes down to performances, and I think you as a player, you want to show people what you can do, and that's sometimes not possible in training. Certainly international level, I think there's a lot of tactical things that, that you know you work on in training. So you can't really get into the blood and thunder, get no. some tackles in. Um, were you thinking, I hope I get to play just so that I can show these lads? Because sometimes within a dressing room, for you to feel that you belong, you need to play in a game. Yeah, you do, don't you? You've hit the nail on the head there. I think I only fitted into Falkirk once I started playing. In because, your own mind, even? Yeah, because... You you are a footballer and you only feel like a footballer and part of the lads when you're playing mm. and you feel so out of it when you're not. But to be honest, not really going into the camp, I, I just thought um, I'll take anything I can get kind of thing and any chance I get I'll try and grab with both hands. And um, Obviously I knew there was a couple of injuries here and there and whether I might have a chance to get on in the Trinidad game or have some involvement in that. So to play so quick um, was amazing, I couldn't believe it really. and. It allowed me, obviously, like you say, to fit in quite quick because when you're on the pitch, I'm quite a strong competitor, and I, you know, I'm not afraid to to be vocal. And I think it's when you're on the pitch, you can just focus on the game and not about who's around and all that. So, yeah, to get that game time so early helped me a lot. How how many days notice did you have that you were going to start? Because I've got an experience myself where I think it was the Carling, Carling Nations Cup or something like that it was and um, I wasn't in the squad originally and then there's a couple of injuries and I got called in so in the middle of these summer holidays I'm thinking yeah. I'm just going to go away now and be on the bench for two games I'm not going to come on and then soon it became apparent that they were going to play two separate teams and I was starting in the first one yeah, and yeah. suddenly you think oh here we go and then you do well enough in the first game to then come on in the second game. <laughs> so really similar for you. Yeah, it was, yeah. When did you know that you are going to start in that Trinidad game? Um, the manager had a word of me, kind of walking out to train and saying, I'm thinking of doing this, and you know, spoke about what he thought I could offer and, and things like that. So I kind of had a little bit of an inkling then, and then um, I think they named the team the morning before the f training session, the day before, if you know what I mean? So I think I had a day's notice, um, which is nice to know. I, I find personally, it's good to have that time. Um, Maybe have a bit more obviously to think about and a bit more nerves, but I knew I knew within a day you know that I was going to play, which was great for me because I prefer that. Um, and then yeah, to get out there and get my first touch of the ball was the most important thing. Try and keep it simple, yeah, and just kind of feel my way into the game. And I think I've obviously watched it back, and I think that's pretty much what I did. Felt myself into the game and kind of got a little bit better as the game went on. And, I really enjoyed it. It's completely different to what I'm used to, yeah. but I really enjoyed it. Could you have picked a more perfect game in terms of location for your family <laughs> nearby? I'm, I'm guessing yeah. a few tickets would have gone out for your family. Yeah, there was quite a few. Yeah, obviously Wrexham's not far from where I'm from, and um, yeah, they were gone. A lot of my mates still live on the Wirral, so a lot of them were, were coming to the game, and yeah, it couldn't have gone much better for me really. The way it all fell in, and. You know, no disrespect to Trinidad, but I was quite glad it was a team like that that wasn't, you know, like a world beater. All um, the touches on the ball. <laughs> yeah, so just a little, not that it was, yeah, like you say, just a little bit of, you knew you were going to have a bit of the ball yeah. and it wasn't going to be too high pressure where they're just ways of attack and you could, so yeah, um, it all fell in lovely for me, really. I'm watching this game and I'm thinking, right, I know Will, I hope he does really well. <laughs> Real proud of my seven caps, right? <laughs> and then towards the end of the game, it looked like it was going to be a goalless draw, nothing happening. You pop up with an assist, and I'm thinking, he's done more than I did in one <laughs> bloody cap. Cheers, mate. Why, why are you trying to make a show of me? 
you, uh, yeah, that must be nice as well. You, it? it doesn't matter what happens from here on in. <laughs> you know, you've you've done something on the pitch for Wales. It isn't a case if you just get a cap, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to be able to do something in the game and make a difference, even if it was just a friendly, must have felt real special. Yeah, it did. It was like the old cliche, but it was like the icing on the top. Okay, I mean, it was like. Um, I, I I felt like I might get a goal actually in the game because like you say I shoot from everywhere but there was a couple of openings and like I said that shot with, where Tyler kind of tried to get out of the way and it hit him I've watched that back about 100 times yeah. um, and I'm pretty sure it's going in uh, but then yeah to f- that that t- that was a bad touch by the way I was touching it for a shot a shock um, that led to the assist and yeah once I dinked it I knew it was there should be someone there yeah. and luckily Woody was there just to nudge it in and it, it was an amazing feeling and I didn't know how it would feel in a friendly a goal because it, obviously it was nil-nil till that point but I was surprised how kind of elated everyone was, the team, myself, the fans, like it meant quite a lot and obviously I know it means a lot but I've never played in an international friendly, yeah. I don't know if people just score a goal and just walk back to the halfway line yeah. <laughs> but it was great to actually have that, that buzz after the game and you know, everyone coming and congratulating me after the game it was an amazing feeling. Um, so yeah, like you say, it's I've got in early and it, I, I'm just happy with every little thing I've I can get. Well, the fans in North Wales have waited probably over a decade for <laughs> to be able to watch Wales in North been, Wales. So that's why for it, haven't they? <laughs> it was more relief than uh, than, than yeah. excitement. But I think the biggest compliment for your performance in that game against Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago is that you come on in the second game. Mm-hmm. You know, the the big game, the, the important one of the week against Slovakia. Doesn't matter how many minutes you've got, the fact that the manager then trusts you to put you on in the latter stages of a, such a, an important game, you must have been buzzing off that. Yeah, uh, you've pretty much said everything there that what I felt like really. Like uh, it wasn't about getting on. Like I, I you know, I, I knew I'd done okay in the Trinidad game and. I was buzzing. That was on the bench. Like that was. I. I wouldn't. I didn't think I was going to get on the bench. You know, leading into the camp. So that was enough, really. And then, as the game went on, obviously I was told to go and get warm. And um, I had a feeling you never. You know, I might want a bit more of a a sit midfielder at this point. You know, or someone that could just go in and just kind of shut shop a little bit. And um, and then it was like right, well stripped. Yeah. Like I, I had hardly you know done much of a warm. It was like right, come on. So I was like, wow, I'm actually coming on here. And um, it's mad how different it feels to like my club football, which I'm lucky enough to play most weeks and play in massive games and massive yeah. stadiums. But that was like something else. Um, obviously being the new kid as well and coming on. And I can't quite believe that I managed to get on, to be fair. Um, but I knew I had a job to do. At 1-0, like, I think the commentator said it in the game. Um, not that I watched it, man, but I have. And, uh, you know, he was saying like, there's no real benefit for me here as in like <clears throat> you come on and you win yeah. you're kind of forgotten about because you, you were winning you come on and give the ball away and they score it's like you're rated and you know if you come on you have no involvement but they score it's the substitution was wrong do you know what I mean so yeah. it's quite a hard situation and I'm not used to it luckily we're starting a lot of games um, but yeah I managed to I kind of help see it out had a couple of touches and kept it simple hooked it on a couple of times and yeah it was um Surreal, really. It was surreal. extra nerves, or is it all looking back just a bit of a blur? It is a bit of a blur, but I was nervous, I suppose, like natural nerves. And then once you get on, like you know, once you get on and you you're just in the game, then aren't you? Um, just focusing on helping, really, what I can do to just see this out. There was only about seven, eight minutes left, um, and not getting carried away. We're trying to do too much, just do my job. Um, so yeah, it was just. It is a blur actually, but I wasn't on long, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My last cap, I came on against Finland in the 92nd minute with 1 0 up. <laughs> we drew 1 1, no. so I'm you glad know, it didn't happen yeah, to you. Exactly, thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's not good, is it? What, um, about, what about the future then, mate? You, you know, just get back in the squad, make sure you're a regular fixture moving forward? Yeah, um, by no means like taking anything for granted now. <clears> but, um, my aim, you know, from the end of that camp to uh, the end of the season was to play as well as I can for Rotherham because that's how I've got in the squad obviously you know it's not because um, like they've discovered I'm Welsh it's because I've played consistently decent for the year and a uh, high level so I just knew I had to keep that up and um, yeah m- my aim is to just offer the manager something different if he wants it and try and get back in the in the squad went really well but I'm not taking it for granted that 
you know, that's that's it now. Um, I have to keep pushing and I think I do offer something different. I think that's what the manager kind of has seen in me. Mm. Um, so I have to continue to kind of show that and just hope for the best, really, yeah. Does it change your mindset with your club career that you're now involved in the international setup? you've had a taste of it, you want more? Does that come into your thinking with various decisions you're going to have to make in the future at club level? Uh, I know that playing at the highest level that you can obviously helps. Um, but I think the manager you know, is brilliant in the way that he, he wants players that are playing and lads that it doesn't really matter too much. You know, There's a couple of lads in League One, there's a couple of lads in Champ, a couple of lads in the Prem. Obviously, Gareth over in Spain. and um, I think he just wants to, to, you to show a level of performance and um, be ready to play and that's something I, I think I offer. Um, so yeah, I think consistency is the main thing. Mm. It, it, to, be, be, to be called up for international duty, you have to be consistently playing well. So that's all I can really do. So so you trust yourself that you, you can do both because sometimes that can be the hardest thing to have one style of, of playing at your club that is more direct and then all of a sudden you're asked to, as a centre midfield player, to get on the ball, get on the half turn, be intelligent pick up little spaces that you're not doing on a weekly basis. Yeah. You just trust yourself that you can do it. Yeah, I think so. But I think also it's the style of your own, like how you are as a player, because I'm not particularly like a, a player that likes it in a pocket to turn and run at players. And So really, it's just changing my style, but in the same position, in the same way I play. You know, you might get a few, like you could see in the Trinidad game, I've probably made more passes in that game than I did the last 10 games for Rotherham. Mm. But that's just the way we play. And neither is better than the other. Um, but you have to adapt, don't you? You have to be able to play. You're not particularly great football if you can only play one way. Um, but yeah, it is harder than you think, you'll know, but it's harder than you think to change your mindset into dropping into different positions and stuff. But you can't go from like a holding, you know, winning all your headers and clearing it down the line to then a number 10 who gets it in turns and makes people. It's just somewhere in the middle, isn't it? And also the coaching staff probably wouldn't expect you to change that much because they've called you in for a specific reason. Yeah, They can see what you do for your club and they're just hoping that that transitions, if you like, in a positive way in the in the, in the senior international yeah, setting. Yeah, exactly. Like They don't, as you said, spot on really, they don't call you up to then do something completely different because why would they call you up when they've seen what you do every week? Yeah. Um, but obviously you have to change a little bit, as I said, um, to the way we play. Um, but the reason you get called up is because you're doing something right in, in the way you play. Now, coming into this living room, we had to take your halo off because you're seen as a bit of a saint in these uh, last few oh, yeah, weeks. Thanks, You've yeah. had a lot of media exposure, a lot of headlines about your work off the pitch. Yeah. You know, we can joke about it, but it's a, it's a real thing. Um, give us a little bit of an insight into, into what's been going on. Yeah, so obviously all the, the media stuff and the kind of like accolade has been from this um the pfa player in the community award which i was fortunate enough to to win um which was a championship league one league two obviously the efl and then the winner was picked out of the three of us and yeah it was me which was great um in a way like i said to you before off camera it, it's fantastic for the hospice where i do my volunteering because they need all the publicity that you can get because it's 90 percent funded from from donations, so it's it's brilliant for them and it um, it's good for the club because part of it was club community. But for me, it's nice. It's made my family proud, and it you know. But it's not why I do it at all. Um, if you volunteered at a hospice for two years every week to win a an award, it you, you just couldn't. Yeah. You'd have given up after two three weeks. It's I didn't even know that the award existed to be frank. Um, so yeah. Uh, there was a lot of it and a bit too much to be honest it started to feel a bit like I'm just talking about myself all the time here and constantly getting asked oh, you're so amazing how do you do that every week and, I, and that's not why I do it uh, at all um, so yeah it's nice that that's died down a bit a little bit but the thing I have with it is obviously I'm an ambassador for the charity so I do have to speak for, for it and you know publicize it in my position fortunate enough to be in a position where people see my face on interviews and hear, you know, read the paper and stuff. So it's been great for them, but um, yeah, I've had enough of the uh, kind of that, all that stuff about me. It's the com <laughs> complete opposite reason to why you do it, I yeah, guess, it is, isn't yeah. it? You do it for, for others. You, you're you not one that wants those headlines that no. comes with the territory. Yeah, it does. You know what it's like. And I think with footballers, 
um, you're kind of put on a pedestal as well as the opposite way as well. Footballers are given bad, really bad press, but equally, there's volunteers that go there way, way, way more than me, and they'll never win any awards. They'll never be in the local paper or the national paper, but just because I play football, I'm in the papers and you know videos of me being this hero. And it's like, wait there, they do 50 hours a week, I do four, five. Mm. Um, but I understand it, you know what I mean? I'm not slagging it off, I'm not saying it's you know it's great for the EFL, you know, to, I think it, the more good publicity about footballers, the better, because all you ever read is a negative. Yeah. Um, so it is nice in a way like that, and as I've said, for the hospice it's brilliant because they need it all they can get. Um, but yeah, it, it's not it's not why, why I do it, that's for sure. What about after football? Is there anything that you're not able to do now that you'd like to when you, when you do eventually finish? When you're watching the London Marathon, our physio did the London Marathon, I'd like to do what Anna finished. I know that's not probably what you meant, but I'd like to do some challenges and stuff that I physically I haven't. Obviously, you can't go and do a marathon when you play football and some other things like that. Um, I'd love to learn how to ski. It's always something I'd like to have done. Um, but in retirement, yeah, don't, obviously, I hope I've still got a good few years left, but it's something I have always been aware of. It's such a short career. like. You've managed to, you know, come into this and doing brilliantly. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely do all my coaching badges, hundred um, percent. Don't know whether I'll go into football or come out of it. Um, depends. I've got a few business things I would quite like to do. Quite, quite like um, get my little property portfolio, portfolio going and building that up as I, as I go along. Really, it is something I've always been aware of, and because I. I like you said, bloom late really in football terms. I didn't start playing regularly till 19 and even then it was, you know, in the Scottish Championship and the league at the time was quite weak so it wasn't like I was earning loads of money. I was hardly earning anything. Um, so I've always thought, right, when you do start earning a bit more money, you've got to be careful what you do with it and look at what, what the future lies because at 35, that's great. You know, even if you get to 35, everyone has this 35 in their head but... You know what it's like, you can end earlier than that or later than that, you don't know, you never know with football and um, I've definitely kept things up going as I, as I can to, to try and make that transition as good as possible um, and hopefully be in a comfortable position, not in a position of thinking, oh my God, where's all my, my money gone or you know, what have I done in the last 10 years? Mm. I will do some, some courses along the way as well, my coaching courses um, I'd like to do and yeah. Um, it's hard to think about because it, it feels a long way away, but it's probably not that far away. Are you going to dress a little bit smarter when you do retire? Because you haven't made much of an effort. No, nah, it's only you. Today. It's only you, though, isn't it, mate? Come on. It's a bit disrespectful. I know, isn't it? I know it is. I've gone safe. You've got these beads on, mate. You're, come, come on, you're what, what are you now? 38? Dressed like 16 year old. 34, mate. Grow up. I'm 34. 34. Look at those shorts. So then. you were crocked at like 30 then. 30? The <laughs> you were finished. It was 30. the day after I turned 30. I better stay away from you. You helped my career, but I haven't done now. I've never seen a smaller pair of shorts. <laughs> I know they are right enough. Careful. Watch that camera. <laughs> One thing I want to touch on is driving here today through beautiful Rotherham. We come through a little place called Wales. Right. It was it was meant to be, meant mate. Meant to be, mate. That's why I moved there, just to start that up. No, yeah, I've never actually been to it. Um, but yeah, there is a place called Wales nearby. Um, you obviously found it. <laughs> What's next for Will Vokes then? What are we looking at? Good question, really. Um, what's next for me is, the way I see it, is I w want to be playing as high as I possibly can, enjoying my football like I am, loving it, and see where I can go with, with Wales. If you know, if I'm fortunate enough to be selected into the camp again, is exactly what I said before, is just grabbing it with both hands, like I have had to do in my career so far, and run with it, see where it takes me, and offer whatever I can if it if turns out that I'm not good enough and there's players better than me, then so be it. If it turns out actually there's a spot there, then I can go and play and play a part in it, um, then amazing. But yeah, it has changed. This year's been crazy, really, career-wise. You're not going to get over seven caps here. <laughs> Who knows, mate? Don't Who knows? Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Got a, hopefully I've got a few more years than you. I'll last longer than 30 anyway. That's not going to be hard, is it? <laughs> I know. Well, whatever happens, mate, with your club career and certainly with the international fold, good luck to you, mate. Cheers, good mate. Good to see you. Nice to see you, mate.